Week 7 of Cash Cups was nuts. We had some crazy plays on East and West and placed really good on both. I decided to try out the low meshes graphic setting this week. I was always hesitant to switch to it because a lot of people think it's really ugly, but bro, it changed my game so much. I always watch pro gameplay and I'm like, dude, their end games look so smooth, but mine's so choppy. But simply switching the setting made my end games feel amazing. I started hitting more shots in end game in situations that usually I would miss. And overall, I felt like I could track everybody around me in late game so much easier. Maybe you can just see through the builds a little better, or just the smoother frames makes it easier to track everyone, I don't know. But we popped off this week. If you've been debating trying out the mobile builds, the low meshes setting, I say try it out one week and see how it affects your gameplay. For me, I don't think I can go back. Another tip I have for you before I shut up and let you watch is do what I did. For several weeks, I focused on one aspect of my game at a time, simply to build confidence and learn more about the game. So one week I would try out W King only, every single lobby, even in the top tier lobbies. The next week I'd go for high ground every game. The next week I'd try playing like a certain pro, I'd VOD review them and try to apply all their aspects of their game to mine. Even though this made me place worse in those weeks, I feel that it really elevated my skill level to where it is today. I'm on the brink of placing in cash cups, and I don't think I'd be here if I didn't do all that stuff in those earlier weeks. It helped my confidence, it helped my understanding of the game, and now, when I'm playing, I just feel confident with every decision and clear-minded in the end games. I'm telling you, it's worth the sacrifice of not placing for a couple weeks to help you out in the long run. Anyways guys, for the rest of this video, it's mostly going to be highlights, but I'm also going to be stopping by, giving you tips every now and then. If you guys have been enjoying the content recently, don't forget to use code JIVENTV in the Fortnite item shop, but without further ado, enjoy these highlights. What in the world? What in the world just happened to my health? So that push right there was a little bit awkward because I went underneath his ramp and got a little bit too much into his builds. At that point I had a good amount of kills and game winning loot, I probably should have just played that out. Or pushed in a smarter way. All in all, it happened, we keep our vibes up, and continue on. Jeez.
Ay. So something you probably notice a lot is I would get to frontside of zone, spray back until I'm on backside of zone, and then cow to frontside again, saving all my mats. Super good rotational trick right there, and it'll help you get more kills too and get people shambles around you. Anyways, on to game three, an absolute stacker. Chat, we cannot forget the cow beneath us. That is gonna be our savior this game. Dude, I forgot the cow, chat. Oh my God. I knew it was gonna happen, bro. <laughs> Dude, I'm so dumb. <laughs> oh, I even said it. It's okay, we win this chat. Real quick, I just wanna throw out a tip. I've had people ask why I build so much and why I tunnel when I'm moving to front edge of zone. And I know most of you already know this, but when you're in moving zones in a stacked lobby, you gotta make sure you're blocking off your angles of most danger. You don't wanna simply run to zone until you get shot because you might get lasered all the way to no health. So it's best to try to block the angles where you know people are located so that you can get to the front side safely, even if you use some of your mats. Better to die without mats than with mats. Ah, oh, dang it.
Oh man. Listen, my aim got a little shaky there, but come on, give it to me, bro. That was a crazy game. I told you guys I'd clutch up without the cow. I told you. And still though, I know my aim can get shaky in endgame sometimes and I'm working on it. It's not a skill that you can just snap and improve. It takes time and I've been practicing. But it's good to know things like that. If you're struggling with a certain thing in endgame, like you're missing your shots like I was there, add extra time to your aim routine. All in all, after that game, we were placed top 100 and it's time for another absolute stacker. If you're not really familiar with stack lobbies, there's usually storm surge warnings and sometimes it hits and that means you gotta get tags in the mid game so you'll be above the storm storm surge. If you're not above the storm surge, then it's going to start taking your health away so fast. That game, I had no idea that I had a medkit in my inventory. If I would have made maybe two less mistakes in this tourney, oh my gosh, I would have been at the top. And that there was one of the mistakes. I just got tunnel vision on my rotate and tunnel vision on my mats, so much so that I forgot to look at my inventory. Not the worst though, we're still placed really well at this point. Let's see what happens next. Okay, now let's see what happened next. This is contested. Got a little psycho on our hands, bro. Are you proud of yourself for this push, bro? Weirdo. So that player ended up running away after he completely griefed both of our games. Taking mid-game fights in these higher elo lobbies is not smart, guys. Don't do it. You may think that your fighting's good enough, but it's not. Fighting players in these lobbies is gonna go on for so long, you're gonna grief all your mats and all for what? One point? Not worth it. But we got our mats back up and we headed to late game.
So this late game was absolutely shambles. I had no movement, but after I picked up this second kill here, if I would have not gone for the loot and instead gone up and gotten out of that awkward lair, I could have probably made something really good out of this game. But going for that second loot got me trapped in all the builds and it was a mistake. I should have gone up or around the side. That hurt our attorney big time. I'm getting griefed again. much confidence. Bro, you're so weird. Even if you made it out of that fight, chat, like, he's gonna be so shams. It's the most pointless fight. Weird, bro. Oops.
I missed my shot, chat. Oh man, dude. I played that game really well. If I just would have hit my shot, I really could have won that. Dude was one shot from a body shot. GG's though, we keep our head high for this last game. Dang it. We got some metal, chat. We got some metal. <laughs> it's funny how I got more excited about the metal than the spaz, bro. Ozzy's watching. Hi, Ozzy. I love Jivin, bro. Jivin's so awesome. Beautiful man. I love Jivin. He's so nice. This whole game, you've been like, keep that person, keep that person. Let's just vibe out, bro. <laughs> Let's just look at the sunset. Or where's the sun? <laughs> just got to chill. Holy. This guy's going to land on me and key me. I can't get out, bro. I gotta hit that. Why did I make that edit? If I would have done a right hand peek there and gotten that kill without taking all that damage, I could have made something out of this game. It's crazy, just one small mistake ruins your game, I'm telling you. Anyways guys, this journey was absolutely crazy. I placed 194th, but if I would have gotten rid of those tiny mistakes, I would have been in the money. If you guys like these cash cup videos, there's gonna be another one tomorrow on my channel Vibe and Jivin. Looking at the West highlights on 70 ping, I placed even better on West than I did on East. So stay tuned for that video. Anyways guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, sub if you're new, use code JiveNTV, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.